everybody, and welcome to Taking Control, the ADHD podcast on Rashpixel.fm. I'm Pete Wright, and that there is Nikki Kinzer. Hello. It's exercise day. Guess what I did today? You didn't. <laughs> I exercised. Good for you. Was it you were inspired? <laughs> well, I felt like I couldn't talk about exercising if I didn't do it that day. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I have mine on my calendar for right when we're finished, so I feel like I'm okay too. That's that, yeah, right on. So I felt like you know I, I I had to make sure I got my workout in this morning, and I did. That's so good. It was good. That's good. good. You feel yeah. better after it. You do definitely. Well, we kicked off our conversation on self care and ADHD last week, and we promised at that time to talk about the role of physical fitness and ADHD this week. So here we are. But before we do that, head over to takecontroladhd.com, listen to the show right there on the website, or subscribe to the mailing list and get the latest episode every week. You can connect with us on Twitter at, or Facebook at Take Control ADHD, and you could always call us, leave us a voicemail at 503 664 4 ADD to get your voice and your questions on this very show. All right, so here we are, exercise and ADHD. So I have to tell you before I get started yeah. on my big old spiel here. Yeah, spiel. Is when I was doing the outline for the show, I kept having this like flashback of this video in my mind. Any guesses of what it would be? Oh my goodness. Um, all I can think about right now is uh, the uh, movie Xanadu. With Olivia Newton-John. Oh, you're so close. Olivia Newton-John. Let's get physical. Yes. <gasps> oh, wow. <laughs> so I'm doing the, you You were really close. So I'm that doing is the outline. so funny. I, why would I go to roller skating, <laughs> Olivia Newton-John, <laughs> when there's such an obvious, more immediate connection? That's Where really funny. she's doing like aerobics. Yes. Yeah. And she's, you know, getting physical. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, it was really funny. I'm I'm typing up the outline and I'm just like, I can't get her off of my mind. I oh, can't get her funny. out of my mind. That's really funny. Yeah, it is funny. So anyway, I just had to say that. <laughs> we'll put that aside. Now, now, now I can't that, get it out of my head. Yeah, now that everybody's thinking about Olivia Newton-John and getting physical. <laughs> and singing it. I'm sure singing. they're singing it. Stop singing it, people. I You're know, just, you just, don't do it any favors. It'll That's be right. with you forever. That's right. All right. So exercise, it's the first, uh, well, outside of last week when we were kind of talking about our vision and stuff around self-care and what it means, it really is kind of the first topic um, to talk about because it's probably one of the most important, you know, um, all of these things are important. I don't want to discredit anything, but exercise is definitely really up there on the, on the list that if you, you know, if you're going to make time or get started on any of these things, and we always talk about starting small, starting with one thing at a time, exercise is probably a good place to start. Wouldn't you think? Oh, yes, I do. And, and you know what, the other, the, the other thing I think about is, you know, we talked about forgetting how to, what it means to feel good. Um, well, I, I think the, once you start again, you remember pretty quickly. Yes. You just, it makes an, a real impact almost immediately well yeah, it, it hurts really probably a little bit and then it feels yeah. better especially that next day or the, right, the second right. day right like, right ah. uh yes well and there's also a lot of guilt i think that's wrapped up into exercise at least i know it is for me you know um it, there's always this sort of nagging you know uh, well i should exercise and i think that for me um the shift came where it wasn't about losing weight um it was more about how i feel and mm -hmm. like you said it's more about you know remembering how it feels to, to just feel good and um when you start kind of shifting the reasons why you're losing or not losing weight see i'm subconsciously yeah, right. i'm like lose weight nikki um <laughs> But, you know, when you start kind of shifting the way you think about it, that, no, it's really just a way for me to feel good, to get energy. Um, it's a great stress releaser. You know, you start to really think about what all the great benefits. And, and it's not just about weight. It's not just about how you look. Um, it starts to be a little bit easier, I think, to to be a little easier on yourself. Like, so if you miss a day, it's not like the end of the world. You know what I mean? Yeah, because yeah. Well, and this was the thing we talked about before, which is that, that you know, the easiest way to find I, and i really like how you say that that it's it's not about weight because really physiologically it's also not about weight right, it, right. it's about tone and muscle and fitness and and bone and joint uh but but weight you handle most directly through nutrition through what you eat 
Exercise yes. is different. And if you if you separate that and you think, oh, I'm going to go run because I'm going to lose weight. If you think that way, you're not going to lose weight. That's not why uh, you do it. Such a good point. Because, I yeah, there is that statistic that says I think 80% of that is is your nutrition or losing weight is about 80% of, of what you right. eat. So, yeah, you're absolutely right. It's, it's not going to happen. Um, well, and I think it's interesting because it, you know, we go into thinking at least again, I can only talk for myself. I have these great intentions. It's Monday morning. I'm going to get up. I'm going to go do this. And it just, it doesn't happen. And I think that for me, one of the reasons it doesn't happen is I always kind of feel like something else is more important. Yeah. And it usually to be all honest, it's my work. And so my office draws me and I'm like, oh, I got to write that blog post or you know what? Got a plan for that podcast. So that becomes more important than getting the exercise in. But then I'm reminded exactly like this morning when I actually made the point to make sure I got the exercise in before I recorded the podcast, <laughs> that yeah. it really doesn't take that much time. No. <laughs> You know, it really didn't. And, and I, I don't exercise for an hour or two hours. I exercise for 30 minutes. And, um, you know, by golly, I did the exercise. I still was able to shower and get into the office and plan for the podcast and do what I needed to do, you know, to be ready here for you. And I'm, you know, it all worked. Mm hmm. That's right. I, I am often surprised by how ridiculous my assumptions of time become around mm -hmm. exercise. Because when I think about exercising, I look at my calendar, I think, well, that's half my day. Like right. I, the, 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 the visual that occurs in my head is yeah, it, it does. It feels that four, way. <laughs> four hours of my day and then I'm lost. But it really doesn't. It really, really doesn't. When you start scheduling it every day and you realize the impact and, you know, we're talking about the, the impact of exercise on ADHD, the right. ability, and, and I'll let you get into the details on this, which is, you know, the ability for me when I'm exercising every day, uh, the ability for me to focus and be productive and get things done goes up so significantly that the cost of, of you know, 40 minutes, 50 minutes a day uh, is absolutely negligible. Mm. Well, you lead in to some wonderful, like real science, you know, statistics. Let's about why about that it. is. Yeah. yeah. So when we exercise, we are exercising our brain along with our body, right? Mm -hmm. And so um, I found this article that really had a great way of explaining it, and we'll attach it to the show notes, and it's from a Everyday Health. Mm -hmm. And what they say is that, you know, the, the exercise actually does the same thing as ADHD medication. So the challenge is that the effects of exercise only last for a few hours following the activity. Since it's not always possible, right, we can't exercise multiple times a day, other interventions like medication can be helpful. So it's kind of like this puzzle of when you're looking at how do I best take care of my ADHD, there's many components to it, but exercise... Um, you know, really needs to be part of that component because it can be just like taking medication. You get both of those things together and, you know, you, you're, and I'm not saying, you know, one way or the other, but it's there and I want people to know about it, you know, yeah, that, yeah. that it matter. you know, these two things together can really make a difference. Um, so what happens is when you exercise, your brain release releases, not releases, that's not even a <laughs> word, Pete. <laughs> Your brain releases several important chemicals like endorphins, dopamine, serotonin, and these are the brain chemicals that affect your focus, which is what you're talking about, attention, and all of these are in short supply um, with, with people that have ADHD. So when you're exercising, these endorphins, these, you know, they produce these feel good chemicals. Um, so not only are you really helping yourself focus and be more productive that day, you're also fighting depression and dealing with stress in a really healthy way versus, you know, going and taking a drink of alcohol in the middle of the day of mm -hmm. when you should not be doing it. You know what I mean? I mean, whatever it is, but it, it's really dealing with stress in a healthy way too. Um, and it's also really good for people who have the hyperactive or the hyperactive type of ADHD, right? So when you're looking at the H and ADD, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, this releases some of their excess energy, um, which is really important. And, you know, we've talked about this before when we've talked about children with ADHD, that one of the worst things a teacher can really do is take away recess. 
um, for a consequence of, of, of a bad behavior or whatever, um, you, you want to actually send them out for probably more recess, which mm -hmm. doesn't make sense to some people, but to that child who has that hyperactivity, um, it does make sense. Well, they luckily, can release I, it. yeah, I mean, and, and we're seeing more and more uh, writing being done in the sort of communities of educators around, you know, understanding ADHD in the classroom. And I, I think the same thing applies to adults at work. Like, you know, you, you sit down in a meeting and you find you're restless and fidgeting and, and you can't settle that. That's that's where it's really appropriate to run to the bathroom, change in your sweats, go for a half hour run at lunch. Right. right? Absolutely. And then come back to work and be settled for a good afternoon. Yeah. Uh, you know, how can you make those? Those those are accommodations, just like we have accommodations in the classroom for our kids. There are accommodations you have to make for yourself around, you know, how you can burn off that excess energy if you find that you're you're in you're having the crazies. Absolutely. Well, and something I just want to reiterate that it, it's not something that you have to do for two hours a day. Like you right. said, it doesn't take a half a day for you to work out. You can get all of these benefits that we're talking about with just, you know, exercising 30 minutes a day. Um, you know, and, and it can be just walking. It can be, you know, weightlifting. It can be anything that you want it to be. Yeah. And I think that part of the problem, um, with ADHD is that you get bored easily. You know, it, it's easier to get bored by just taking a walk or whatever. So there's got to be some ways that you make the exercising a little bit more interesting, you know, so that could be definitely like switching it up, um, listening to your favorite podcast when you're on your walk, you know, listening to us. I was just going to say that that was going right? to be my, I'm so glad you We're guys are your favorite me. podcast. We are your favorite podcast. <laughs> yeah. I throw that out there. <laughs> uh, so, but you know, those, those are the things that you got to make it exciting because your brain is wired for excitement, not boredom. And so, you know, if you're talking about how do I get exercise in, how do I make this happen for, for you? Um, that's one of the things you have to look at is what do you enjoy doing? What do you love doing? And, um, doing more of that than doing the boring stuff, like walking on a treadmill you know, may mm -hmm. not excite you. There was a previous blog post that, um, oh, I guess I probably wrote it, I don't know, two or three months ago, but it was 10 tips on how to fit exercise into your daily routine. Um, and I'd like to cover some of those today because we are talking about exercise. What do you think? All right. I like it. Yeah. So, and we'll make the, um, or we'll put the link of this blog post into the show notes as well. So you can actually see it. Yeah. Uh, but this I think was the, one you wrote, right? This, this is, is one this that is I wrote. One that we wrote. Okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and the first thing on there is, is scheduling it, you know, really having a plan of when it's going to happen. Um, it's so easy to just think, okay, I'm going to exercise three times this week, but then the end of the week happens and you never did it. So you really have to be a little bit more intentional. Um, and schedule it, be committed to that time, um, you know, have an accountability partner with you, either go walking with them or meet them at the gym or have a trainer if you can afford it. You know, these kinds of things are, are really building into your structure of making this happen for you, mm -hmm. right? So you're mm -hmm. really setting yourself up for success when you do something like that. Um, and I think that the next thing to that is once you're there, once you show up again, you don't have to do it for an hour or two hours, just do something. Maybe it's just a 10 minute walk, you know, just to get started, especially for those of you out there that haven't exercised for a while. It doesn't make sense for you to go out and try to exercise, you know, for an hour. So just start with 10 minutes, just start with 15 minutes. And then the next day, you know, add five minutes or even add just a minute, you know, you're going to slowly eventually get up to the point where you want to be it. And you, you kind of want to minimally be at that 30 minute mark if you can. So yeah. work yourself up, you know, to that. Um, one of the things that really helps me is just having my clothes ready to go. Um, I know that sounds really silly, but just having them laid out, then it just is one less step I have to do in the morning. So anything, oh, yeah. no, any, I, I think that can become an incredible roadblock. Are you kidding? Just yeah. laundry. laundry is a terrible roadblock. <laughs> Well, and if you're going to listen to a podcast and there's a specific podcast you want to listen to, like a specific show or episode um, of Taking Control of the ADHD <laughs> Podcast, uh, have that planned out. 
You know, like know which show you're going to listen to because that throws me for a loop too. When I'm like, okay, I'm going to listen to a podcast and I've got probably four or five of them that I listen to and I I don't know which one I want to listen to. And so then I start scrolling down the feed, which one looks interesting. Well, how long is it? It, that takes a lot of time. (laughs) So the more you can kind of pre-plan that, I think, um, again, you're setting yourself up for success. We already talked about doing something different, something new, making sure that you're doing something of an interest to you is definitely going to make um, a huge difference. And I think the other, the last thing I um, have to say about this is tracking your results. And it's not just the weight loss, right? It's not just the number that you're seeing on the scale, but it's really tracking how you're feeling. And, and, you know, we mentioned this before, how we're falling into that trap that we're forgetting what it feels like to, to feel good. So let's document that. Let's write about it, you know, put it somewhere that it feels really good today that I got this 30 minute walk and, um, you know, just track how you're feeling. And, and eventually you're going to notice that, you know, your jeans are a little lighter or a little less mm-hmm. tight. And, you know, you're going to, you're going to notice these things, um, all the benefits that you're looking for. But, um, I just think it's important that you're paying attention to that. So you can kind of see your progress as you go along. Yeah. I, you know, and you, we've, we've gotten some feedback and, and some feedback that I'm working into the digital show that we're going to be talking about with this series, uh, in, in several weeks, um, uh, about just sort of data collection. But I, I, I just have to go back to this idea of the daily journal, you know, of, of taking the time to jot down just a few sentences of, of, you know, what you're, what you're feeling and keep it in one place. You know, if that's a yes. digital thing like day one we've talked about, or if it's just getting yourself a nice, uh, a, a nice journal, just write a few sentences about, about where you start each day and where you end each day and or draw a little face a smiley face or a frowny face or something that gives you a sense of of your progress because i guarantee when you go back and look at that after three weeks six weeks ten weeks you'll notice a trend you will start yes. feeling better and it's not just about like you said it's not just about the weight although uh boy am i excited to talk about uh about a little tech tool that entered my house <laughs> Uh, so, uh, it, stay tuned, it, it, stay tuned for that. Uh, so I, I just think having that, that sort of documentation is, is, can be incredibly motivating. Absolutely. Uh, so one piece of this that I want to talk about that I think is important is backsliding. Um, and you know, we've talked about backsliding in regards to organizing, you know, you've organized a space and then all of a sudden it's, it's kind of come back to being disorganized and it's sort of the same thing with exercise. You've been maybe really consistent with your exercise routine and then you've had a few days or a couple of days or a week, you know, maybe you went on vacation or whatever, where your routine just sort of went away. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, I'm guilty of this and I'm sure many listeners are too, that there's a lot of shame that's attached to that. You feel, you feel bad, you know, it's like, oh man, Christmas was here and I ate too many cookies and. Oh, hallelujah. That's <laughs> exactly. Know. Hallelujah. Pass the eggnog. Oh, of course. You know, well, it's one more day until New yeah. Year's. I'll just go ahead and eat all of this, you know, chili cheese dip. Yeah, but then <laughs> no it's, one's New, then it's New Year's Day and oh, everybody's, oh, I Eating gotta have some soothing and- comfort food because I treated myself so poorly the night before. <laughs> exactly. Uh, so there's a lot, you know, shame that's attached to this. And uh, again, kind of tying into the ADHD, um, ADHD can sometimes really make you kind of think black or, or white. There's no gray, right? So it's kind of like you're all in or you're nothing. And so some people can easily feel like, well, I've already messed up. So you know what? I'm done. I, yeah. I can't do this anymore. I've tried. I never succeed. And then what starts happening is is these old beliefs that we've talked about, these old tapes that are in our head that just start um, beating ourselves up. And so we want to stop that, right? So backsliding, just like in organizing is probably going to happen in your, um, self-care, mm-hmm. you know, with, with ADHD, it, it probably just expect it to happen. So first thing I would say is be aware of how you're talking to yourself. Um, it doesn't have to be all or nothing. Your old beliefs don't serve you. Um, so let's, let's think about what would serve you. How can you be kinder to yourself? Um, and just kind of re, you know, reminding yourself that I can't change what I did last week, but I do have control what I do today. Mm -hmm. I have control over my next meal. You know, I have control over, um, how much water I'm going to drink today and really just kind of zeroing it back into where you are right now. So there's a little bit of mindfulness in that, 
right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Really being in the moment of where you are and and what choice am I going to make today? Um, And I just love that tomorrow is a new day and we get, we get another chance. I mean, that's the one of, one of the wonders of life, right? Is we get another chance. And, and so um, what can you do to, to make yourself feel better? I I, yeah, I like to break that down even to the, like the minute. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I just I just ate that cookie. I just had no reason. I went in <laughs> and I snuck a cookie or a big piece of chocolate or something stupid. I didn't need it. I wasn't hungry. Uh, but you know what? That was like last minute. Yes. That was something I just did. And you know what? Now I recognize it immediately. I know that that was not the right thing to do. I'm going to make a different decision. I'm not going to take the next bite. Right. Yes. And that is especially true. I mean, I know, I know we're talking about food right now, but I I think that's especially true on food that, you know, isn't good for you, but you don't even really like. Mm -hmm. I think that when you're kind of on a mission that I'm going to start taking better care of myself, that you're more aware of that food and stay away from it. Like Mm -hmm. if I'm going to indulge, I'm going to indulge on something that I really like, not on something that's just like, eh but I'm going to eat it anyway. Right. Um, so yeah, I mean, I think that awareness is, is, is important. My, my dad had this chemical that his, his nutritionist gave him at one point. It was just a little like homeopathic thing, or I don't know if you'd even call it a homeopathic. It was just a thing that you, uh, you put a little, a few drops on your tongue. And then for some period, like a couple of hours after it would change the, the balance, the, the chemical balance in your mouth so that whenever you ate sugar, it would taste like dirt. Oh my gosh, really? Yeah, wow. it's like behavior modification with, with these sort of natural chemicals. And, and it would absolutely kick your cravings for sugar because it didn't hit that it didn't taste that dopamine. Good. It didn't taste good. It didn't give you that push. So you would end up eating things that did taste good to you, which was anything that was that didn't have sugar. Like those are the kinds of, of like behavior modifications that I appreciate. Uh which yeah. are the things that you just introduce into your system and they push you in a new direction. Yes, it's like putting um, like vinegar or something yeah. in your fingernails so that you won't bite your fingernails. Yeah, right, right. Sometimes <laughs> yeah. you just have to do that. It's just Sometimes the, the reminder. You just do. Like you're quitting smoking, right? I I never smoked, and, and but I see people with rubber bands. You know, when they crave a crave a cigarette around their, they put a rubber band around the wrist and snap it. So oh, that right. It's like that little. That was really popular, I think, in the '80s. I'm not sure they do that anymore. That sort of pain, kind of <laughs> pain. Uh, pain therapy. But uh, anyway. Yeah, we'll stay away from that. Stay away from pain therapy. (laughs) Well, um, another really good strategy, I think, is this three-day rule that uh, is really great to implement if you, um, you know, you're putting a lot of time and and intention into this exercise program that after the third day of missing your exercise um, workout, you know, just knowing that on that fourth day, you have to do it. Like there is just no excuse, even if it's just for 10 or 15 minutes, because what typically happens is that after the fourth day, then you really tend to get into that backsliding um, momentum. And so, you know, I would just be aware of the calendar. If you missed your workout on Monday and Wednesday, you know, just make sure you're doing it on, on Friday, you know, make sure you're doing it over the weekend or mm-hmm. however you've, you've decide your schedule. But, um, that, that fourth day is pretty important. So mm-hmm. you want to be aware of that. And, and, and again, I just want to emphasize, it's just doing anything, even just for 10 minutes, it gets you, it gets you going. Mm-hmm. Um, we've already talked about the accountability partner. I think that's, that's huge. I mean, this show was an accountability partner for me today. Like, okay, I'm going to go do it. Right. Because I need to be able to tell you listeners, I worked out today. That's right. Not that you you. probably care, but (laughs) yeah, there you go. Um, the other tip that I had that I think is, is really important, um, is, you know, if you can't exercise that day for whatever reason that, you know, you go back to focusing on your nutrition, because if you can have a great day where, you know, you got a lot of water in and you ate well and you didn't exercise, it's not going to, it's not going to affect you that much. It's going to be okay. So, you know, if you know, you can't get to the gym, just really focus on your nutrition that day rather than have it be an all or nothing. You know, you don't have to eat really poor just because you didn't work out that day. Um, that yeah, kind of that's huge. I, that was the, that was the real, uh, sort of in terms of tracking data, you know, I, and again, I don't, don't want to focus too much on that, but, but in terms of tracking data, when I started keeping a food journal and tracking the calories that I was taking in and, uh, the, uh, the app that I was using would give me the, the calorie credit when it sensed that I did some exercise, 
Right. That ends up being amazing as a motivator when you see that, you know what, I can actually eat more when I exercise and I have to eat more when I exercise. Right. 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 uh, You know, I get to have I'm like buying myself some some sense of satisfaction there if I go out and exercise really well. Um, But on the on the same front, to your point, if I don't exercise, at least I know what I'm missing. Right. You know, and, and I, I know how to make the right decisions because I know the gap that I won't be able to fill that would have existed had I gone out and, and worked out. So yeah. anyway, yeah, that's big stuff. Well, I would love to hear from other people because I think that this, um, you know, a lot of people out there, this is really important to them. There are several clients that I talk to that, you know, I have to get my running in, I've got to do this. And, and, and they've already had that shift. And so I would love to hear if that is you, you know, how does that work for you? What um, are your thoughts, your ideas, you know, general tips or opinions? We want to hear from you. So definitely um, call us or, um, you know, leave a comment on our podcast page or whatever you want to do. Um, I would love to, to hear more thoughts on this. Absolutely. Absolutely. How, how are you uh, managing your physical fitness with ADHD? We'd love to hear it. Yes. All right. That's it. I think that's all we have to say. Yes. It is. <laughs> Fantastic. All right. Thank you uh, so much, everybody, for downloading and listening. Again, uh, jump over to Take Control ADHD on Facebook or Twitter and join the conversation there. And on behalf of Nikki Kinzer, I'm Pete Wright, and we'll catch you next week on Taking Control, the ADHD podcast.